get mm-hmm. our guy, one Mr. John Kincaid, coming back on the Bostonian the versus the book. There Always he is. Get him on the program. How are you, sir? How's well, look Philadelphia? At me. Look at me. I'm bloated by around 15 pounds. Okay. I am. I am. That is my hair, which I look like I fit in on this show more with this new hair. Don't make <laughs> and, fun of it, John. You look great. And, and uh and then and then i t- you know i you you pull me up and i look and dave looks like some bad 90s white rapper <laughs> with that outfit on he's got like he's got like nana shaw with like uh logos painted on it what is Hell that yeah. what is that oh. he he would not wear that back in philly Yes, he would. No, oh, 100%. Oh, he wore it he wore it at the All-Star it. game. That's where he got it. it. Was on the West Coast, but he would wear that Right well, down the All-Star Broadway. game's different. That's a different <laughs> thing. You wouldn't wear it on, let's put it this way. You wouldn't wear it on October 5th in Philadelphia. That would, that, that just, I mean, seriously. <laughs> right down what was the name of, What was the name of your album? White Milk? <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Listen, I'm lactose intolerant. I wouldn't name it White <laughs> that Milk. Should be, that should be the title of your album. <laughs> lactose intolerant. <laughs> That's it. Don't make me start <laughs> rapping. Yes. Don't make me oh, no. He does rap. John, Please. he does. Oh, really? Don't he make does. me start. Once a week. Dude. Once uh, a week, dude. he comes on. Yes, and you, know what I, you know what? I have, I have seen that. So I have seen that happen. <laughs> How are you guys doing? We're great, John. Great to see you. It always um, is good. You know, we'll, we'll get to the other stuff here in a minute, but you're in sure. Philadelphia. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in outside of Philadelphia, by around 30, around 30 miles of downtown. How great is it again to have this red October? I mean, this is, the, and as you get older, it gets better, doesn't it? Like well, the baseball run is different than anything else. There is. It's this city, though, and it's funny. I'm sure that Bryson has told you about it. I mean, when it's b- baseball, this city, if you, if you offer it a crappy baseball product, it does not care. If they get a good baseball product, they go overboard to the hill, which is just really crazy. And Red October is a thing. My wife laughs. She's only lived here for a year and a half after we relocated from Atlanta, but I grew up here. But the news starts, action news starts, and it'll be 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and we laugh because it'll be like, all right, shooting downtown today injures four. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, somebody knocked off the Walmart. But the big story in action news, Red October. <laughs> and everything, and it's all about, and, and she'll say, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. The first three, the first three stories are about the Phillies. Yeah. Where, where, where's everybody going to party for the game tomorrow night? What's on your menu? Uh, you know, here's, here's last night's, it's bizarre, but everybody just goes overboard into red October and tomorrow, I mean, sa- uh, Saturday, oh. we get to start a whole new round of it, which will be awesome. So before we get to the brave series, which I can't wait to get into it. Cause it's going to be awesome. But when the Phillies are in the postseason and the Eagles are four and oh, this feels like a conflicted city because the, the Sixers are a disaster and James Harden, no one wants to talk about the Sixers and the Flyers are the Flyers. I invited James Harden on today with us and he refused to show up. He said he's not coming. So, you know, I mean, what, what can I say? He's just, he's, he, I'm sure he's out at like a Club Risque right now or something. <laughs> yeah, with, what, Meaning, it's, it's, with, it's, with it's 2 p.m. Yeah. With, Mer- <laughs> with Mercedes and Dotson and, uh, and Chrysler. He's having so lunch, what? He's having lunch with them right now. What is the order right now? 4 no Eagles, uh, Phillies playoffs. Who's taking, you know, who's in the A block for the show? Red October. Red, uh, the A block, the B block, maybe even the C block right wow. now. And the Eagles rarely get shoved into the back seat, but they're in the car seat. They're in a car seat right now. Wow. 4-0. Oh, with everybody, because it, it's, it's, it's a little difficult because this city, one thing it doesn't do well is great success because we've never dealt with it. And when we have a football team that is just absolutely awesome, a baseball team that is one of the just hard charging fun stories, the football story more reflects other cities. You know, maybe when Tom Brady was in Boston, you guys know that, but to me, but here it's more about, you know, we're more about the Rocky story, the underdog, the scrappy team. And they love it. And they love these Phillies and they, they love them. They love the players. They love the personality. We did, we did a lot on the show today about the fact is I've never seen in all my years of being around sports and doing what I do for a living, I've never seen a team where the youngsters are engaged and ingratiated into the veterans as fast. Usually the veterans are like, I, I, I watched it in Atlanta forever, where veteran players back in the era of, you know, the Glavin Maddox Smoltz era, 
where the youngsters would go in that locker room and they were told you'll be seen and not heard. You know, just, mm. just do it. Put your head down, go to work, do the old school. Philly is anything but old school. They mm. invite the young, the youngsters come in and they have a personality on the field and off day one. And that's a credit to, that's a credit to the Phillies organization, but it's also credit to the veterans yep. who let it, who let it happen and are, are cool with it. Um, they love the Phillies. Do they love them in the series against the Braves, John? Because I love Braves them. are minus one fifty. Okay, that's a big gap. That is at, at, at it's well, surprising, but it's not one? because it's the Braves. So they're minus one fifty favorites, my, and it's going up minus one fifty five in some places. It might be one sixty now. I haven't looked. Wow, well, but suckers the, are born every minute. That's Woo! what I'm saying. They beat them last year, and yep. if they can get. They, uh, Wheeler's not starting game one. Wheeler's if, going game two. Nola will go game three. So who's I, going game one? Well, there's a big discussion about it this morning. In fact, we had Jeff Francoeur on this morning, who still owes me his entire broadcast career, but I've never <laughs> seen a dime from him. <laughs> in, his, in his playing, in, like Jeff Francoeur, is, uh, he's, doing the, he's doing the series on TBS, and I said to him this morning, are you freaking kidding me? I said, it started out with you doing a once-a-week half-hour on Buck and Kincaid in Atlanta with us, we had to like hold his hand and walk him through broadcasting. Just he, he thinks he's six two and good looking. That, that, that gets you on TV. <laughs> look, look, at the three, look at the three of us. Right, That's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, but I mean, I talked to I talked to him this morning, and Ricky Vitalico is part of our station uh, as part of our afternoon drive show, and Ricky does Phillies pregame, postgame on television. And so I had them both on and had them talking back and forth about a lot of the series. And I've got to tell you is that uh, the Braves last year were 14 games ahead of the Phillies. Guess what they did this year? 14 games ahead of the Phillies. Uh, I think that, and I've heard people around the Phillies organization talk about it. Is it really important to, to win your division, get a week off, and now the, the, the best team in baseball draws the Phillies? I mean, baseball, mm -hmm. baseball doesn't recede. Mm -hmm. And having last year, both teams that had the buy in the National League lost. Yes, they Both did. of them yeah. lost. Uh, and I talked to Brian Snitker back at the beginning of this year. Love Brian from my years in Atlanta. What a great, great guy. And Brian Snitker was like, that week off screwed us up. Like it was, it was a, like it was the week off. This year they played simulated games in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they played two simulated games. It actually reminded me of some of the years where I've covered, you know, the Atlanta Braves, where they would have that many people in the stands. Uh, but it was, it was, so I was glad to see that back up. They're good people, though. Atlanta's good. And Atlanta organization, they should be favored big over the Phillies. The problem is, I think the Braves have fallen back into their old habit at the moment a little bit of they really are built – they do stuff for 162. They worry about 162, whereas – the Phillies did not care about 162. They just cared about getting in and being as healthy as they can. They went with the six man rotation from the All Star break. Yep. Who does like who does that unless it's necessity or let you know it's something like that? They uh, they purposely went with the six man rotation in order to have Wheeler not be out of gas in October like he was last year, have Nola not be out of gas like he was last October, and they still made it to the World Series. This was their strategy. They went with it. I necessarily didn't agree with it. Because I grew up, you know, in this industry, I, you know, my first full-time gig, which went 20-some years, was in Atlanta. So I saw the Braves, and we were the Braves station, and got to know Bobby Cox and, and yeah. everything. And so I sort of bought into that 162 Matters thing. The Phillies threw that right out the window. They're Is that, I mean, for you, what's that like for you personally when you have these two teams on a collision course, I'm only thrilled. only one will advance? I mean, are, are you conflicted at all? Please, Matt. People are talking about me in two cities. What's this ego? <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you serious? I have two cities obsessing on me. It was great. The best thing in the world was when, best thing in the world, my years in Atlanta, were when Philly and Atlanta would, would just, because I never hit it from day one. I was starting on the air, Buck and Kincaid, my first year. So it was the first year of our show. We, we debuted in 2000. And Larry Munson, the great voice of Georgia Bulldogs uh, gave me some advice. And I was like, uh, I said, Larry, you know, he, he pulls me aside and he goes, Hey kid, let me give you some advice. My advice to you is you're not one of them. Don't try to be, Ooh, don't ever try it. to be one of them. Amen. You're, you're an outsider. 
embrace being the outsider. And he said, and they will eventually accept you and love you and welcome you in. But don't ever try to be them because you're going to look like a Yankee carpet bagging fraud. I think it's sort of like the terms. <laughs> And Hell the weird, yeah. thing was, weird thing was, he was Sounds from freaking, like this guy. the thing is, though, he's from freaking Minnesota. It was the great Larry Munson. But, oh. he was giving me, but he was giving me the advice. Don't, don't, don't. He said, they welcomed him into the family. And he became voice of the Braves, voice mm -hmm. of the Falcons, voice of Georgia Bulldogs, legendary. But he told me, don't be something you aren't. He said, you're not going to pull it off. And so it was great advice. So I was the black hat. I mean, I was right. the black hat for, for most, <laughs> I would say for around... 10, the show ran 20 plus years. We were, I would say the first eight, nine years, I was black hat. Yeah. Not, and then everybody just sort of accepted me like their obnoxious drunk uncle on Thanksgiving. You have to let them in. You have to, I, I have to let this person in every day to my life, but I'm just going to like sit him at the kid's table and hope that he, you know, hope he's bombed by halfway through the Lions game. Oh. And stops talking about who he voted for and uh, what, what what he thinks of the the kid who lives next door. You this know, it's like that type of thing. This is Pete Rolf's career in the South. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. I'm <laughs> listening to this and I'm like, this yeah. is the same thing this guy did while he was right. You know, and you're, I can, I, I'm 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 imagining Matt in in Alabama. And the thing is, though, is that <laughs> what the, what the weird thing is, though, is that Matt, it is. I think you'd agree, the Southerners are welcoming. Much more yes, welcome, man. much more welcoming than the Northeast. Much more. Oh, because they want oh, you to. God. They want you to be like them. So they want yes. to make you part of them. The Northeast people are just like, get out of here. We don't want to deal with you. Right. You're not from here. You're the Southerners at least give you a shot. Yeah. yeah, they really do. And I loved my time in the South. But I would tell you this: when I when I am on my deathbed, I will, which hopefully isn't coming soon. Not uh, any time well, soon. Well, well, wait a minute. That's in me. You know the, the things that I'm getting. I'm doing chemo right now as I talk to you. What's wow. science? It's amazing science. But uh, yeah, I got this little pump, uh, you know, gives gives me my poison. So I call it my uh, pump the poison. So I can do that, but I can do it right when I'm sitting with you. But when I'm on my deathbed someday, I will be thrilled that I got to at least do a chapter of my career back home. There's nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. Waking up in the morning going, oh, my job today to make a paycheck is to talk about Red October and the Eagles. Are you kidding me? Because I'm excited about both, and I had a dream last night. Ooh. I had a dream last night. What you? What was it? Well, I was doing chemo. Okay. And I had a dream while I was doing my chemo at the. I do two chemos. So I Are your chemo. dreams crazy because of the chemo? No, it never, never. It happened yesterday afternoon, though. Though I had a dream, so I'm doing my one chemo yesterday, and then they give me a pump that they put into my chest, uh -huh. and I take it, and I take it with me, and I I wear it for like 42 hour, 44 hours. And then I return it and they unhook me. And, and so that's my, my second chemo comes that way. And uh, I had a little dream. I took a nap. I fell asleep. I fell asleep in the, in the waiting room. I was so tired. Then they got me back in my chair. I reclined. I fell asleep. And I had a dream that me and the two of the guys I work with were in a car and we were driving to a parade coverage. And we were talking and I'm trying to go, I'm in my dream going, where are we driving? Cause I, I, it was weird. And it ended up that we parked the station vehicle and it was an Eagles parade. Oh, so, and I was hoping it was a red October parade, but if you told me at gunpoint, I have to choose one, right. I'll, I'll take a, another, another Super Bowl. Like uh, I, I, I love, I've seen two world series. I've only seen one Super Bowl. I promised I'd never ask for another one. So I'm not asking for it. Yeah. I promised. <laughs> I went to church, you know, the church that's um, diagonal to, Mandalay Bay, right yes. next to where the horrible shooting went down. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, when I go to Vegas, I'll go to the I'll go to Saturday afternoon mass at that church. Okay. So the day before the Super Bowl, I'm I'm in Super Bowl hosting a party at the Bellagio, and so I go to I go to uh, the church for Saturday afternoon mass, and I wore my I wore broke all rules. Catholic school kid from Philly always follows the rules. I wore my Eagles shoe, my Eagles Nike shoes. Hey, I wore an Eagles jersey, yeah. everything. And I signed the book and back. And I invoked every one of my dad, whose birthday would have been today, his 99th birthday would have been today. Wow. I invoked my dad and all of his brothers and all my other uncles who indoctrinated me into Eagles football. And I wrote it in the prayer book and said, fly Eagles, fly in the prayer book. Took a picture of it. And uh, when they won that Super Bowl, like that, that church is always special to me. 
because it'll always be like, okay, I, I, I was there the day before the Super Bowl. You know, it was did just you awesome. cry when they won. Did you get yes. a little tear? You did. Yes, absolutely. I, I did, and it was weird because my my wife and daughter were in Atlanta, and my daughter only really at the time cared about sports at all because of me. Only reason she didn't give a damn. I mean, her dad's a sportscaster in the city she grew up in, and she only had lived there. And she took more abuse for it than anything. Just like oh. people being like, because she was in it. And so she leaned right into it. Oh, nice. Oh, I mean, she, like she would have been the subject of one of Dave's rap songs back in the 90s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ballsy little girl. Like she, she, she literally would give and take with the boys at her school. And it was a, a big sports factory. I mean, Sean McVay, the, the Rams coach, was one of our state championship quarterbacks, oh, you know, wow. at the okay. school at Marist, And uh, back in the day. And uh, Olivia's taller than him right now, by the way, I think. <laughs> and uh, I love, no, love you, Sean. Love you, Sean. But he, uh, but He's having a baby suit. You got to be nice to him. Yeah, I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and, did, and Mrs. McVeigh is very attractive. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? He did well for, I guess. Focus, I, focus, I guess it focus. Be a come five on. Foot thing. Okay. So, I mean, I, I look at, I, I got to forget where I even was. <laughs> uh, I, I think you missed me. Let's let's ask you about this. Let's go. Yes. Let, let's let's spin it off the the, the Phillies sure. and go to the Eagles. They're at the Rams this week. There's a lot of rhombuses and parallelograms and you know bad guys. Everybody's saying the Rams are the side plus the points. Really, the Eagles are undefeated. Nobody wants to give them any credit. All they do is win. There's no style points. The main thing is the main thing. I love oh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Fortune cookies. I mean, he seriously, speaks, though, he speaks in fortune cookies. It what do you mean, seriously? Do you want to? Uh, do you want to live in a Nike commercial? Yeah, I want. I want every I want, damn day. I want. Yeah. Some, guess what? I want someday. I want somebody to throw Jalen some truth serum in, in, in his coffee, and just let him just speak because he speaks in fortune cookies. He, he speaks but, in. He speaks okay. in Nike. He speaks in Nike commercials. Correct. But, product, John, but John, think about his career. Thing. Think about his career. Okay. Yes. Everywhere he's been. If he says anything that's even remotely controversial, it all blows up in his face. I mean, he gets gets benched for Tua, and he goes to Oklahoma. He wins the Heisman. He goes to Philadelphia. He's not the guy. No one believes in him. Everyone's right. questioning him. Like right. he's he's had to be questioned his whole career without having to say a word. And if he does say anything about it, what benefit does it have? I, I get why he's such a, a walking cliche because I wouldn't say anything either if I were him. Well, to me, though, it doesn't allow me to see the genuine Jalen. True. What I do see is a guy who is a damn hard worker, mm -hmm. a great representative of his team in his city, and a fine gentleman. So, I mean, those things are great. And those things probably help to make him great, you know, as part of what makes him great. But I'm going to tell you right now is that I just, I would like to see Jan Jalen a little more comfortable in his own skin where he'll speak out and speak up. Like right now, they got this whole thing. We got our new offensive coordinator. Brian Johnson, who mm -hmm. was given who was given the job because he was Jalen's like best friend. You know, he, he was his dad. Um, he, he, you know, his dad coach Brian Johnson was his dad's quarterback. And then Jalen was like the kid on the sidelines dealing with Brian Johnson and everything. Oh. And I say to all that, I don't care. I don't care about family history and crap like that. I think of the fact right now when I watch the Eagles, that the offensive coordinator is over his skis. Ooh. I don't really? believe – I think the pace of the game is not going well with them right now. I don't like the pace. I don't like the, the, the offensive play calls. If I see this one more time <laughs> on Sunday, send in the play, come on, let's go, it drives me crazy because I didn't see that with Shane Steichen. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to – if you're going to – if the Eagles are an, a, a new team with a new head coach and they bring in Brian Johnson and they bring in Sean Desai and these guys are going to learn on the job – I'm okay when the team was 4-11-1 under Doug Peterson the year before and he got fired. When you go to the Super Bowl and you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kansas City Chiefs and it's 35-35 with less than four minutes to go, I'm not okay with the new hires being people who are learning on the job. Mm. I'm just I'm – not, I'm not happy with it. I, I I don't understand it. So are, they, uh, are you saying they're going to lose this weekend? In no, I think – no, in fact, I think this is going to be the coming out party. Oh, I think this is going to be a uh, a perfect conditions, perfect track. Uh, AJ Brown can't be can't be he can be contained. Yeah, he, right. he can't be stopped. I expect a Devonte Smith game though. Oh. I think Devonte Smith is going to. I think there's going to be so much attention paid 
to A.J. Brown that this is going to be the Devontae Smith game. Okay. And that tends to be the history of how it works. And they're dying to get the ball to the tight end. Uh, Dallas got it. He has not – I mean, he has not yeah. looked himself. Yeah. And I blame – again, I blame the offensive coordinator. And I blame – sometimes I blame Jalen staring down – whatever wide receiver he wants to hit because God, God has been wide open yeah. half the time. So I'm thinking about some of those props and I know you guys always will give, you, you give some player prop ideas and yep. things like that. I think Dallas Goddard may be worth a sneak peek on Sunday versus the Rams because their linebackers, they cover what they cover people in, in intermediate passing game, sort of like I would. So <laughs> I, yeah. don't make fun of the cancer patient. Dude. I was going to say, can you still That's cover it. intermediate? I can't. No, routes? I, okay. I, right. my, my own father, my own father said once, you run like you have a piano on your back. <laughs> and Thanks, I'm like, Dad. I'm like, Thanks. well, you get great, but, but you give good effort. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's effort great. Guy. So I'm the effort guy. Oh, yeah. no, dude, dude, I could line, I could align to, uh, a, a a giant shelf in my bedroom of the team spirit award <laughs> the best you know uh, uh coaches coaches x factor oh all this God. kind of crap in other words kid who tried really hard yeah. always ran his mouth was very supportive of the team and everything yeah. but really where the hell do we hide him you where can only we, have where one. Do we, where do we hide him you can only have one cowboys lose to the eagles in the nfc championship game or the phillies beat the braves in the nlds Phillies beat the Braves because Cowboys aren't going to be at the NFC title game. Ah! Ah! You see, because, you see, let's see now, what, what we did, it, we did a thing on the show this week. So Matt, I'll turn it around on you and Dave. All right. If you're the, if you're an Eagles fan right now, and Matt, I know is throwing up in his mouth at the, at the prospect. Uh, if I made you an Eagles fan for the day, Dave, you can understand this. You can, yeah. you can be, uh, who do you root for Sunday night football? Eagles are five and oh. They've either squeaked one out against the Rams or, like I think, they will win by, like, 10. I, I do think okay. it's going to be an Eagle victory. So if the Eagles are sitting there 5-0 and and they're flying back home and Nick Sirianni's watching on the plane, yeah, who should they root for? It's not Dallas? even a question. Yeah. Are you nuts? Uh, no, I, no, I'll I have answer my, no, I have my answer. I have Give my me answer San Francisco decided. on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every day. I'm never rooting for Dallas, ever. No, but, I mean, no, no, no. Me? I'm more talking about – Strategic. What what benefits them strategically? Yeah. And I have an I have my answer, but a lot of people disagree with me. I'll like I'll, I think almost the majority of our listeners and everything disagreed with me. You I think want... Dal I think I want Dallas losing. Yes. Yeah. I I think, San, yeah. And they're like, why would you want that? Then San Fran's going to be five and zero too. Well, right. the Eagles of San Fran they they do meet once, and they meet in Philadelphia. So we there you go. To, and December third. So, right. but more importantly. Your first path in the NFL should always be to have a home game, win your division, have a home game. And if you have to win three games to go to the Super Bowl, so be it. We've so seen a is. lot of teams do it. But yeah. I don't want that to be the case. I don't want to be the two seed. I want to be the one seed. But it's not a disaster if you're the two seed. Patriots have won. Patriots won, I think, three. Patriots won as a three, a four. Yeah, no, no, no. no. They, they, they won every, every – either one or the two that, that they won other than the first one. Oh, I one. forgot. They were in the Mickey Mouse division. Well, eh. Yours yeah, is turning, yeah, yeah, yours is turning into one. I mean, well, the Giants, I you, Giants and the I, Commanders are right there. During Mickey Mouse, I, I, gotta, so. I gotta tell you, I like, I, I sort of like what the Commanders have cooking tonight. I, 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 no, no, no. I'm talking about as an organization. Oh, I sort of like, oh. that. but um, but oh, oh. Uh, but oh. but uh, tonight to watch the Bears and Commanders, you know, that would have been something like when my daughter was ten. I may have punished her with. <laughs> I was gonna say, like you're on, you're on the chemo, you're falling asleep, taking naps all the time. Are you gonna be able to even stay awake for Commanders Bears? Well, here, well here's the uh, look. The Commanders and Bears aren't worth me staying up for because, for, Dave, you understand, you understand this community that I work in. If I start talking Commanders Bears game tomorrow, night, night. Bear, I'm fired immediately. <laughs> they're literally they're looking for, and and my bosses are looking for a clause in the contract to get out of my deal. They're like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> But no, we're not. We we want. I would rather, you know. Seriously, I'll talk more about what's going on on Young and the Restless and General Hospital than I'll talk about what's going on on that. The kids I'm that are watching the show don't even know what the Young and the Restless are. Yes, General they do. Are. They do People not. Know. No way. They've been, at, they've been at Nana's house. They know <laughs> no Victor, one sub twenty five knows what those two. They know. Are. They, they know who Victor Newman is because Grandma watches them. You know, oh, so God. my story. Remember my grandmother calling my me to story, watch my story. My oh, my story. gosh. Yes, That's my so story. crazy. Well, John, Johnny, so old. Johnny has his stories. <laughs> Johnny has his stories. Believe me, it's so the way good. it works. It's well, awesome. overall, though, serious for, for, for a second. Sure. How are how are you? Serious 159, by the way. 
Yeah, that's a channel. Correct. Yes, yeah. Sirius XM. Sirius. Correct. Yes, yeah. other other type to, of Sirius. Hello, hello to the great you. Eric Spitz. Yeah. The, who, who was oh, oh Eric Spitz. Eric yes. was my boss at CBS Sports when I when I took my show over from ESPN to CBS Sports Radio. I have the utmost respect for Eric Spitz. Let's let's people who are professionals do their job. He's a wonderful guy, and I love what they've got cooking over there. My buddy Damon Amendolara joined. Da went over yeah. this week. And DA does just, and I know Matt, you've run into DA over the years. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Matt, he does one of the most unique, weird, and stupid shows I've ever, I've ever think, and I find it incredibly addictive. <laughs> if I wasn't, I, I would go and watch clips like I watch you guys. I go and put on DA show. I love Mraz. I love the whole gang. I'd right. put them on just because it's so weird and stupid. It, you can't turn it off. Right. Like yeah. he, he finds, he, and I love people in our business who are unique. I love people who don't. You know, who who tries something a little bit different. I always say to our crew, let's break some eggs. Yeah, it's serious eggs. for a break, second. You know, it's serious yeah. for a second. There's a yeah. lot of people in the chat that are concerned about you. They're yeah. seeing you on the tweets and everything else at John Kincaid. Sure. Going through what you're going through. How are you? Just I'm just good. tell the people what, what you're doing. You is, your treatment number nine coming up. Is that what you're treatment in right number now? Nine, well, the, well, this is treatment number nine right now. So as I said, I go on every other Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I do my chemo. They give me my steroids, which are bloating me up terribly. I have a bloated midsection, and the rest of my body's fine. Like it's okay. just, it's just this. And I've got a little bit, little bit of cheeky. I'm much more cheeky than normal. I want okay. my cheekbones back. But so I get this. I I do my chemo. I do my uh, steroids, and everything. And I do my anti nausea in in like drip bags, so IV bags. Yep. And then when I'm ready to leave after doing that whole process, which takes around two and a half hours, three hours, in the chair. Then they hook me to this pump, which mm -hmm. goes into my chest, into my port, which is in my chest. And I do mobile chemo for, for two days. So around mm -hmm. it's around 44 hours of poison, uh, very similar to some of Matt's weekends back in college. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I, will, uh, I will do my poison. Tomorrow after the show, I'll get off. They will um, unhook me. And I will be 42 days from completion. Wow. Uh, I asked my doctor last week and I'll share it with you because uh, I've shared it with my radio audience. And I said, doc, how am I doing? He goes, honestly, because they can trend me against over 29,000 males who've been okay. through, who's been through this double chemo. He goes, you're, he, he said, you're exceptional. So, I oh, mean, and God. I've never been told that in my entire life, not even on my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when you hear that, when you hear that, it warms your heart. So my, you know, and it's uh, how she hasn't killed me after after going through this, my wife, how she has not killed me by now. Because I seriously, at some point, I'm always thinking that thing. I may end up on a 2020 and I'm not going to be end up on the good side of it. You know, it's that she's just going to she's going to find a way to take me out. The same boat. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, we lost I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. Put him in the big box. So I, mean, so I mean, but I just look at it as. I got, God bless everybody who has reached out to me, who has supported me. Um, I've been wearing the hats. And before my look, I got six weeks left of this crap. And then I got one more shave down because when my hair gets to a certain length, it starts to like, it'll start flaking out and it starts flaking out. Like it'll hit yeah. the pillow. Yeah. Right? So I want my hair back. So by the time I see you guys in Vegas at Super Bowl, yeah. when the Eagles are in the Super Bowl against the Bills, I will, uh, I, I will have my hair. My hair will be somewhat back to the gorgeous man that I am. I can't wait to run yeah. my hand through it. You can. can't. You can. Look, I'm I in Vegas. Look, I'm in Vegas. My wife will be back in Atlanta. You want to rub your hand through my hair? What, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> Where are you going, anybody, Joe? Thanks I mean, for serious. coming on the show today. I Listen, it's, 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 it's great to hear you and see you in, in such great spirits as what you're going through. We're all pulling for you. I know We're watching you. you. you I got want a ton my hat, of, though. I want my damn hat, Dave. It's coming. I got I got white oh, wow. model. I got this. Okay, I white got model. this model. You gotta get the Eagles the black, model though. And I and I have this Philly special. Okay, yeah. that's pretty sweet too. That's the old yeah. school with the baby that's pretty blue. Sweet too. And I, yeah, I mean, and well, I got a Kelly Green in Kelly Green in this is all oh, Kelly Green. I promise Green. you it'll be featured well on uh, on my show. So every day I am wearing a hat from a listener that is sent in a company, uh a listener. Oh, we'll take care of that. Hat. Today I, I wore Today I wore a Villanova basketball hat. Nice. And I oh. had to stop. I had to stop from vomiting. <laughs> I, mean, I have not wanted to vomit the entire time. Cross that off the this. list. I will not oh, have one of those. My Villanova. You're basketball getting a care package. Hat. It's gone. The Villanova basketball is gone. I mean, my brother now has a Christmas gift that he, but it's been worn once. 
he won't be able to tell. And <laughs> it, but but I said, and people were like, "You're a temple guy. You're wearing oh, a villain of a basketball." And I said, "Look, that. I said, look, I know I am, but I'm never going to reject reject a, a gift of kindness from a listener and everything like that." So I wore it today, and I said, "And I'll never wear this damn thing after ten o'clock." <laughs> Ever again, so warm. I'm warm and fuzzy like that. You guys are awesome. I love your show. Thanks, I man. Con- I love the concept, and I love the fact. I, I like the after show crap too. Yeah. <laughs> I said that too. I said bonus time is a big hit. Uh, yeah, well, I, I I thought after show crap should have been the constant title <laughs> or, or a working title. We're working on it, but I actually find sometimes I'm I'm actually more compelled. To this. The stupid <laughs> stuff, but I like stupid stuff. It I is like, stupid. I like I like real fun stuff, and you guys yeah. are doing a great job with it. And uh, I hope you, I hope you're well. And we I will see you in, I'll see you in February. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy the NLDS. It'd be a lot of fun with the Braves. Appreciate and it. Too. Always. Phillies, Phillies. By the way, if the series goes one-one, I would bet Phillies in four. It, you know where you can bet the exact amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I would bet Phillies in four because I think the Phillies will split in Atlanta, and I think the Ghost will enter that locker room, and the Phillies will come home, and they will not win here. Phillies in four. And uh, four. Phillies and four, and Dave will be wearing Nana Shaw. Uh, <laughs> they'll be only the. Uh, it would be great. You guys are awesome. Take Bye, care, sir. Talk to you, John. Take care. Bye. Take care, buddy. See you. That, that that is one, Mr. Junkin.